So folks, here we are. Uh, as I was mentioning earlier, the home stretch. Uh, even if you don't watch IPL, you know what the what the buzz is. If you're in the twentieth over and you still have reasonable runs to <laughs> score, not fifty, but hopefully five, ten, twelve. So we're in that zone now. Once again, welcome. This is the Think Startup series from Vadwani Foundation, and uh, thank you for being here throughout the series. Most of you have been with us, I think, across the sessions. And we, you know, we kind of started this journey to say, you know, let's do something that can inspire us. Let's do something that can help us think a little deeper. Let's let's also hear what others are doing. And hopefully also trigger us to take some action along the way. So that's been the series so far. We are in session nine of nine and glad to bring it all together together with you while the overall um, topic for today is startup funding we will do a series level wrap up so folks any question that you have any pending queries treat this session also as kind of an ama kind of like an open house so please don't restrict your thoughts questions comments reactions to only funding of course funding questions are welcome Plus anything else, because like I said, we are bringing the whole series to a closure here. So fundamentally, while while we'll talk about many, many things, Wilson, hi, welcome. Uh, while we we'll talk about many, many things, I'll tell you fundamentally three questions that we, uh, the three questions that we will attempt to answer today. Question one, as a founder, the question we get asked often is, when can I raise funding? Am I ready to raise funding? If yes, what do I do? If not, what do I do to make myself eligible? So what does being ready for funding mean based on where you are in your journey? One. Two, since funding is all about this relationship, right? There's this dialogue that happens between the founder and the investors. We must appreciate things from an investor perspective. What is an investor looking for? We know what we're looking for, hopefully. We have clarity on that. If not, we'll build that clarity in this session. But what are investors looking for? Question two. Question three, how do you make remarkable pitches? And folks, pitching is not just about PowerPoint. It is actually about making powerful points. And it's a skill that can be practiced and acquired. And we will talk about that. So three fundamental takeaways uh, from today's session. Plus, as I said earlier, the fourth takeaway is any pending question, query that you perhaps wanted to ask but didn't ask earlier, or perhaps you did ask, but we didn't quite get to it. So today, of course, we'll try to bring it all together. But before we go forward, folks, uh, I want to just take a few minutes in recapping where we are. We started this journey together nine weeks ago. And in this journey, we had this framework called the startup maturity model. We kept talking about it in between here and there, five levels, and said, OK, don't worry about the model per se. But we will cover it over our nine sessions. So let's do a quick recap. Where are we? What have we covered? Uh, remember, we've been talking about this one startup, which is in ed tech, into edtech space, looking at some AR, VR solutions. So perhaps I'll take some of those examples. So what have we achieved so far? And how do we take things forward? So before forward, a little flashback. So level one is all about looking at entrepreneurship as a possible career option, life option, doing that reflection and saying, you know, do I have the skill? Am I ready for it? Who else has done it? Remember, we talked about from Azeem Premji to Mark Zuckerberg uh, to, to uh, founder of Paytm and Practo. We talked about so many different people so that you get to understand what it means to live that life. Uh, we also, of course, talked about you know, an entrepreneur is always looking for problems. And the problem has to be big enough, significant enough. It has to be worth solving so that somebody will hopefully become a customer for it. So level one really was all about going deep into problem zone. And because we did that, we got some early ideas uh, about what we want to do in life, but maybe not very precise. So for our ed tech startup, they, they did they went deep into, you know, why are children not learning? What are the root causes? What is the policy issue? What is the parental problem? What are the teacher problems? And they said, you know, we want to do something around technology so that we can do it at scale, but not quite sure yet. That's OK. So that's what that's how we completed level one. And then we jumped into level two, which is saying, is really 
is there really a need for this? And the best way to do that is to empathize. And empathize is a very strong word we're using deliberately here. Essentially, we're saying you can't just chat GPT or Google your way out of it. You got to go out there. And upon first, you have to identify who your potential customers might be and go and talk to them. What are the needs? What are the pain points? What are the high points in a day? What do they like? How, what does it mean for them to feel emotionally if the children are not learning or learning well? Either way, empathize. We also talked about figuring out, is it a $5 million market? Is it a $25 million or $2 billion? There's some mechanism we look at. We also said, OK, we also said, OK, this is what I'm hearing from the from the parents and the children. You know, and AR, VR is actually making even more sense right now. So even before we jump into it, who else is doing it? What's my competition? We did that. That was largely level two. Folks, please keep in mind, while the model has five stages, there's some overlap, right? Life is not as distinct, you know, two finishes and three starts the next day. Some overlap here and there. We then said, OK, uh, if you're going to get into this space uh, before jumping and making all these investment and creating these tons of products and services and software and tools, can we build a minimum viable product and check it? Take it back to the customer and say, hey, is it working for you? Is it doing the stuff it ought to? Is it not? What's your experience? And parallelly, we said, let's figure out how we're going to earn money off this, right? Are we going to charge subscription fees? Are we going to charge one-off fee? Are we going to have a different pricing depending on uh, urban, urban location or a suburban or a rural location? All of that business thinking around the idea is really what the crux of level three was. We sorted that and said, OK, now that we have clarity, let's build a solution that can go to the market. And just a solution is not good enough, right? You ought to have go to market or marketing and sales and support. Uh, preparation. You got to make sure you have the money and resources to make it happen, and at least some minimum team to take it to the market. You can't just be one or two people. Usually, it takes three, four, five, ten people to do the launch. That was level four, and of course, all of this is setting the stage to bring us to launch and beyond, which is what level five is all about. Which is for a for a nascent. Uh, venture like ours, how do you make sure we nurture it? How do we make sure it survives the initial phases and then thrives thereafter? How do you define processes? How do you scale it? And to do all of that, you will need funds. And that brings us, of course, ladies and gentlemen, to the topic of the day. So this is the journey. We've actually gone through all of these journeys. And a quick reminder, all videos are there on our platform. Uh, template for each session, hence each level out there case studies out there. Uh, I know you haven't had the chance to implement a lot of this stuff, but as you get into that mode, all that we've been sharing is already available to you. OK. So uh, Sukumar, welcome. So we have our, our friends here on the call. So folks, you want to guess? When we talk about startup funding, what does it mean to you? What, are, what option do you have as a founder? Who, who can fund you? Where can this funding come from? What kind of funding? Do you have any thoughts? Go ahead, Sukumar. Yep, you're typing. Who funds a startup? How do startups get this money? What are your current thoughts on this? Good evening. Very good evening, in fact. So hint, you may have heard VCs, venture capitalists. OK, so that certainly is one of the answers. You can say that as well, but plus anything, anybody else. Who do startups raise or can raise money from? OK, Surya, VC is the one we heard. High network individuals, HNI for everybody. Absolutely right, Surya. Anybody else? Is it only, do you understand the difference between equity and debt? Just say yes or no. So I will spend maybe two minutes or not. Equity versus debt. OK, you're good with that, Surya. Uh, Arti is coming in with her thoughts. 
Bootstrap, absolutely, that's one way to do it. You're right, you're right. And we'll discuss many of these options of Bootstrap, HI, VCs, equity based, debt based. So, equity is when you give a part of your company and somebody gives you money for it, debt is really a loan that needs to be paid back with interest. Uh, friends and family, absolutely, Sunanshu, thank you. So, actually, there are many options. There's no dearth of options uh, for startup with GYUC, et cetera, at the end. Tons of places you can get. And some of these are very familiar names. Uh, you talked about bootstrapping, friends and family, uh, VC, angel investors, slash HNIs. But there's some new terms here as well. Uh, crowdfunding is a new one. Grants may be somewhat new. We'll talk about those. Uh, and there is friends, family. And we'll tell you what that question mark is. OK, so I'm going to talk to you about all of these options. We're going to talk about all the options. The only thing to keep in mind is as we run through these options on the x axis, of course, there's time, which indicates that the startup is maturing and progressing. As the startup matures over time, the amount of funding that you need usually goes up. You may start with five lakhs and you may raise eventually 50 lakhs or five crores. Uh, usually, as you go on the right with time, you, you get more seasoned investors and institutional players coming in who you go to. You may do initially friends, family, angels, HNIs. You may need to go to more professional VCs later. Of course, because the check sizes are large, because the deal sizes are large, usually the amount of time it takes to close the deal also goes, increases as you go to the right. I'll tell you what the right is. So it could be as little as two months these days to as high as maybe eight months, nine months these days. I'm seeing deals taking that long. OK, let's see what the whole ecosystem is let's see what the terrain is all about uh, we'll do a quick run through pre-seed by definition is for startup if you notice that are at the idea stage proof of concept so all you have an idea in your head maybe it's a write up on the paper uh, maybe a, a short pitch that we will we'll share a template with you maybe you've done that maybe you've done some basic homework around problem very broadly maybe articulated in two three four pages there is some funding available. Usually, like I said, the quantum will be small, but 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, usually you can get. Uh, where do you get it from? Of course, Bootstrap, which is self, friends, and family. So that's FFF, S-F-F. By the way, there's a term some people use at this stage called FFF. You want to guess what that, what that is? So self, friends, family is S-F-F. What is Triple F. Any guesses? Any guesses? First one in that is actually still friends. Friends? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, on a lighter note, it's called friends, family, and fools. Why? Because you know, at this stage, you really, there isn't really that much tangible uh, existence of the startup. It's an idea in somebody's head and some vision, perhaps. Uh, so it's high risk, perhaps high return, which is why some of these investors at this stage are also called, uh, use, people use that term. But many grants are available. We'll talk about that as incubators and crowdfunding also we'll talk about. So this really is, if you're still at this idea stage, the seed stage is, Remember, minimal viable product, which means you've created some avatar of your product, app, physical product. Some rudimentary avatar has been made. It works. You've taken it to customers, taken the feedback. Some may have loved it. Some may not have loved it. Doesn't matter. But you have proactively taken your idea to the market and gotten some traction, early traction. Not revenues per se, if you can generate, great at this stage, but that's not really a concern. Though that stage is called the seed stage. Now, again, friends, please keep in mind, sometimes the boundaries blur. Sometimes people invest at the idea stage and say, I'm giving seed funding. That, depending on who you talk to, the definition might be different. I'm giving you broad structure, generally acceptable structure. And again, you'll see similar uh, you know, um, uh, funders here. There's self, there's friends, families, there's still grants. Uh, angels have come in here. Incubated crowdfunding certainly continues. So I'm going to talk 
to you, particularly about grants and crowdfunding, because my sense is because most of you are in that early stage. That's a question on your mind. Uh, do you want to guess what <laughs> force? Uh, sorry, I just saw it. Well, yeah, especially if you don't, if you take the money and um, don't do anything with it. Yeah, the friend is very quickly becoming a foe. Good one, Surya. Uh, folks, you want to guess what crowdfunding is? You may have already heard some of the names on the screen. Any guesses? Crowdfunding, crowd sourcing. That itself is a hint. No? So, uh, so the idea, okay, Wilson, I'll wait for you. Okay, I'll wait. So, Kickstarters and the Wishberries and the Indiegogo of the world help you raise money from lots of people. That's right. People who are known, not known, friends, well wishers, really. Instead of saying, I need 10 lakhs, can I go to one person or two H and I and say five, five each, can you give me? And it's hard, right? Five lakhs at this stage, pre seed seed is hard. You'll say, okay, let me go to a crowdfunding platform, put my idea there, share my idea, get people excited. Maybe they'll only give five, five, th 10, 10,000 rupees. But if I get 100 of those, 200 of those, uh, you know, I'll have, the, I'll have the money to actually make it a real product. So people put up these projects. Uh, People get excited, but they might give money in return. They may get goodies. They may get some early versions of the product. They may get discounted products. Uh, they may get uh, longer or free subscriptions to certain things. So the startup in its own way acknowledges that investment. It's not usually not an equity investment. It is it is really a grant that, you, that the general public is making. They're betting, they're betting on the startup and saying, OK, hey, take my 10,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees. Hope you do well. If you do well. You know, give me the first product free or at a 50% discount or something. Tons of such platforms are, exist out there now where average people are exploring projects and saying, okay, this sounds interesting. I think I'm going to bet on this. Similarly, in the last few years, friends, uh, the government of India has actually launched a significant number of schemes to both provide moral physical and financial support for startups. So Startup India Seed Fund Scheme, right at the top is maybe a year, two years old. Uh, during COVID, it was launched. Excellent scheme. So you can go to incubators, and the scheme is for pre-seed, seed, and beyond. So 20 lakh, I've seen many deals happen. I've seen, I've heard deals of 40, 50 lakhs as well. So uh, again, you can do Google a lot of these. Each has its own terms. Some are equity, some are grant. A grant is just a money given to you. Uh, with no expectation that it will come back. A loan is I'll give you the money, you will keep giving me interest, and at some point you'll pay, repay the principal. Equities, I'll give you the money in return. Either you will give me equity today or give me a promise of a certain equity, 2, 5, 10%. So different ways. Uh, Biorec does great stuff in biotechnology. Those of you who are interested in ex exploring biotech, uh, uh, health tech space, please check out Biorec's site. There are many other, uh, those interested in agri industries, rural industries. Uh, SIDBI does a lot of venture capital fundings. Uh, the last two are really about loans that you get from banks and other institutions. So there's a lot out there. This is just a snapshot. As I mentioned, loans, grants, equity, or or or, or, or variations of equity. We won't get into details, uh, convertibles, etc. But there are many variations available. Suffice it to say, for good startups, and I've been saying it all along, right? We talked about funding. People say there's a funding winter going on. Yeah, funding has become tight compared to last year. Perhaps you're 30% down in overall funding, but deals are happening. Every week, I continue to get pitch decks. I continue to evaluate startups. Uh, and basis my own thesis and my own, let's say, resources, I continue to make investments. Perhaps I'm also a little cautious. If I would make, let's say, I don't know, 10 in a year, I'm doing maybe two, three, four, five as an angel investor. Uh, but they're happening. Good deals, good founders, always, always, always in demand. So if you reach that point, you're now, and you've taken your startup to the market, you've, you've launched it, you're six months, one year into it, 
you need money now uh just to survive initially to be honest and then to do a little bit of operational optimization build a team you know get get more professional um, management happening in your in your in your startup so that you can grow and that series a again vcs come in at usually at this stage all the others continue on accelerator angels uh, series b is when you've been in business for quite some time you've been there 2 3 4 years and now you've been growing like this you really want to grow like this or you want to grow globally or you want to you have two products you want to add five more products uh, so series b c d e uh, these are big ticket deals usually pre seed let me give you a sense is 5 to 10 lakhs c it can be 10 20 30 lakhs series a could be 1 to 5 cr maybe up to a million series b onwards is tens of millions and of course most startups also aspire to eventually take their venture to public and that's the initial public offering or ipo that eventually happens like i said on the x-axis is time so depending on how well you launch uh, this whole journey can be as much as i don't know six to ten years left to right series a perhaps in the first two three years depending on how fast you're launching up any questions please keep in mind okay pre-series again so pre-series as the name says in is in between the seed and the series a so i mentioned seed is let's say 20 30 lakhs and series a could be a million which is let's say eight crores in the middle let's say you wanted only two crores people normally will do another one called pre-series a which is post seed pre-a that's typically uh, how it's distinguished and because it is pre-series a the ticket size is smaller you don't have to show that much traction uh, as series a demands so pre-series a you could have been in business six months one year and you can raise it series a usually one would expect about two years of uh one to two years of minimum operational experience again uh yeah i think most people in the call wilson are in the pre-seed slash seed but don't get too hung up on technology because like i told you depending on who you talk to some founders even say oh i'm raising series a but i said listen you just did 20 lakhs last time are you series a or are you pre-series a are you series b or pre-series b actually it doesn't matter don't get hung up on terminology please get the concept right as you mature your startup as you develop and as you take it to the market more funding options open up both in variety type of investors and of course the quantum of the check okay so that's question we, we were going to address three questions today question one was what kind of funding options at what stage so we talked about grant equity loan um and other formats from idea in my head uh, and on a piece of paper too i've been in business for five years ten years and i want to do something else the whole range exists uh okay we talked about our view let's understand the second question which is the other view what do investors look for can you give me some idea if you were an investor okay let's do this let's say i'm pitching to you for a startup idea stage and I'm saying, okay, can you give me one lakh? What is the question in your head? Really, it's a real situation. You just heard me pitch, you heard me talk. I'm very excited, um, passionate about my idea. I'm asking for one lakh. What question are you going to ask me? What question is in your head? Ah, very good, Surya. How will I spend it? Will I go buy a bike with it? Will I go to Goa on a vacation or will I do something useful with it? Fair enough. And what, what is the definition of useful, right? Will I invest in product? Will I invest in marketing, hiring people, doing feasibility or research? Absolutely right. So investors want to make sure you are using the money for the right things. And right things also vary depending on where you are. If you're pre-seed, Right thing will mean, are you validating the problem? Are you talking to customers? Are you really thinking of wireframing, prototyping, and pre-MVP? That's what I want you to spend the money on. Uh, it's too premature to start running paid performance marketing campaigns on Facebook. Too early if you're pre-seed. You're wasting the money. Or you're going to go and hire three people immediately, three engineers where 
you know, you, you at the early stage, perhaps you're better off with yourself, co-founder interns, perhaps. Okay, I'm going to share with you the journey I follow as an angel investor. Uh, almost on a weekly basis, I was sharing. I get pitch decks and I attend uh, pitching. Either they're pitching programs or one-to-one -one pitching and all of that. And I'll tell you the process I follow. And usually these are 10 to 15 minute pitches, guys. Just keep this in mind. I've heard somebody pitch 10, 15 minutes. I've asked some questions. And I'm telling you what's going on in my head. As a founder, when you do these kind of pitches, whether it's a pre-series, whether it's a 5 lakhs or 5 crores, really, your job is to get a second meeting after the first pitch. Because in you know, no matter what you see on Shark Tanks, nobody writes a check on the spot. Even if they do, it is symbolic. They will go back and do a lot of homework on you, due diligence. All that you said, all the fantastic things you said, uh, I'm making this, my product is the biggest, my team is they'll come and check all that before you can actually bank that check. So, um, so when you first time interacting with an investor, your question in your head should be, can I impress them enough for, so for them to say, hey, Wilson, are you free next week? Hey, Surya, can we meet next week and discuss this? That's your objective. Because when I'm listening to the pitch in 10, 15 minutes, all in my head, I said, listen, this is interesting. They were a good bunch of founder or founders. Uh, I like the chemistry. I like their energy. Looks like they've got something unique happening in, in what they're proposing. It's not one of you know yet another e-commerce and yet another Uber and yet another uh, Blue Smarts. Uh, I think they're on to something. Let's talk. That's all I'm saying. Nobody's writing checks, by the way. That's all you will get. A good outcome of a pitch session is to say, is to get a follow-up meeting. If you get that meeting, chances are you, and I think they're going well, you'll end up spending four, five, six meetings where the investor is just going deep down in your business. What are you making? Give me a demo. How is it better than the others? How big is the market? How will you sell it? Who is who is on the team? Why are you asking for one crore? What are you going to do with that money? Really, four, five, six meetings. If all of that goes well and the lawyers get involved and accountants get involved, there's term sheets being signed, another maybe four, five, six meetings, then money hits the bank. So friends, whether it is, OK, I give you a range, right? From the top, first 10-minute pitch to the money in the bank, minimum, minimum, minimum is two to three months. Please, please, please be prepared. It used to be about one to two months. These days, it's two to three months. Uh, like I said, I've seen things getting stretched to eight, nine, ten months as well. Investors will continue peeling the layers of the onion in every single meeting and going deep, detail, uh, going in various levels of details around you, your idea, your business, competition. That's their job. I want you to be very, very, very clear on the arrow on the left. Your job, you're not, a build, you're not building a business for the investor. You're building a business for your customers and for yourself. So you focus on these fundamentals from bottom up. If you focus on the fundamental, you will may actually naturally make a great impression. If your fundamentals are shaky, you haven't done your homework, feasibility study that I think Wilson talked about, you haven't done that, uh, you haven't talked to any comp competitors, you have no idea who your customers are going to be, you're just building the app sitting somewhere in the corner. You Very quickly, chances you will not get the second meeting, to be honest. But even if you do get the second, third meeting, things will get revealed very quick. So my recommendation, focus on building a great business. Investors will follow. I'll also give you my view on early stage funding, seed, pre-seed, pre-series A. For me. I'm betting because it's so early, right? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if the market will build up. I don't know if you can actually build that product. I'm actually betting on the team, really. So the team has to shine in the meetings and the presentations. Of course, I'm interested in betting on other things as well. But for me, number one deal clincher or, or deal dropper, really, is if the team is just not there or I, or I don't feel that chemistry or I don't feel they're committed or I feel I can't add value. It's really, 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 really that human connection that's important. Others are important too, but human is really, really critical. Any questions? So we answer the second question. What is an investor looking for? Investor is looking for 
opportunity to make money. Founders who are experienced, capable, excited, passionate. Founders I will enjoy working with and creating something that can be an industry leader and a game changer and a disruptor and all the big ones. OK. Third, how do you make great pitches? What is a pitch, by the way? This is define it first. Anybody? What is a pitch? Just the word pitch, generically. OK, Wilson is typing. Um, concrete idea, maybe. OK, somewhat. Somewhat. Wilson, little more than that. Surya. OK, I'll wait for Surya's response to come in. Defining your plan. OK, getting there. So an idea which is a little more concrete, as Wilson said, and a plan that is taking shape. You're right, but let me step back. Actually, pitching is, is not always in the context of raising money and investors. Of course, that's the focus today. But guess what? As a founder, you're always pitching. You will always be pitching to customers, partners, employees, investors, of course. Pitching really is if you're able to sell your idea, get people excited about what you're trying to do. Marketing, it is part of marketing. So even if you have a product, how do you convince somebody they need to buy it and buy it now? If you don't have a product yet, you need to get them excited on your vision and the direction you're in and how what you will do will, you know, be the next big thing in metaverse or, or electric vehicles or whatever you want to do. So please keep in mind, broadly speaking, pitching can be used in multiple contexts. contexts. We will, of course, only focus on the investor part. Okay, quickly, again, there's a lot of confusion on terminology on this, and I don't want you to get hung up on this. You will hear terms like elevator pitch, detail pitch, initial pitch, follow-up pitch, idea pitch. It can go crazy. So I'm, I'm giving you an operational definition here, something that helps us bring clarity. Something called a tagline pitch is a simple one-liner about your business, really, which is why you can finish it in five seconds. I'll give you examples just now. An idea pitch is just the idea. You haven't done anything. This is pre-seed seed. Things are in your head on a piece of paper, napkin somewhere. What is the promise that you are selling to the other or what you will build later? Very quick, less than a minute. You should be able to convey. I'll give you a template for that. If you've been working on a few things, you actually developed a plan, maybe got an MVP out there, got some validation, and you are getting into that launch phase, you can actually do a startup pitch very nicely in two minutes to see how Surya, as you rightly said, you're defining the plan. We'll give you a template for that. And the other pitch that I mentioned, that you are, you've been out there, you are, you've done all the validation. If you're even if you're raising for seed funding, you've done all the validation. You figure out who your team is going to be. You figure out your marketing channel. You may not have implemented, but you figure it out. Or if you've been in business and you've already been doing this, then there's a formal investor pitch, which is 5 to 15 minutes usually to show what is your traction or planned traction. Folks, multiple pitches, purpose is different, stage of life is different, templates are different. You can Google and there's tons of templates, very easy to get lost friends. You'll find a Ratan Tata template. You'll find a Sequoia template. You'll find an Airbnb example. You'll find a Facebook example. You'll very easily get confused. We, will give, we are going to give you very simple templates to get this done. OK, let's do the basic things first. Simplest is your tagline, really. It's actually a branding tagline which comes serves as a pitch as well. If somebody meets you literally for two seconds, five seconds, and say, what do you do in life? And say, oh, I'm trying to build this thing. You know, I was studying. I've been researching on this. I think there's a lot of excitement. You've lost it, at least in this occasion. You have five seconds. If you look at the examples on the screen, they're all real examples. Every startup says, I'm doing this for this customer. I'm designing affordable, chic, formal wear for Indian working women. I'm trying to provide Indians with an option to read any site in any language. 
I will help an average Indian do great with stock markets. Done. Listen to that. I barely took two, three seconds. And any, any business you can define. It's hard, by the way. It's hard to define. Any idea to be conveyed succinctly is harder than if you had five minutes to describe it. But this is a skill. Like I said, all of these are practicable, learnable skills. Tagline, quick. One-liner. Does anybody have an idea in their head right now? Anybody? Rough idea, I agree. I understand. Not very well formed. Okay, Wilson, if you don't mind, and Surya is also typing, do you want to try this one-liner? Just type the one-liner. I am doing X to help Y. I am developing swappable batteries so people don't have to wait for two hours to charge EVs. I am developing clothes that will self-clean. These are real examples I'm giving you from all the fish techs I keep looking at. I am developing an IoT-based solution so that we don't over-pesticide our crops. Simple one-liners. If you feel comfortable, you can type. We will, we'll of course, give you templates. I am doing X for Y. Hopefully with some benefit, Z. Um, for developing a device for different numbers. Great. Great, Wilson. Thank you. Oh, Wilson, you could just say yes or no. Did you listen to Ashwarya? Wilson, were you there when Ashwarya came on the call? Oh, great. Uh, if you want, I can connect the two of you because she's obviously in the same space. Extract more from the ore. Okay, interesting. Interesting, Surya. I like that the rhyme that comes in. More from ore. Ore as in iron ore, etc. I'm assuming, right? Great. Great. No, no, you're, you're, you're getting it. Absolutely. Very simple. It's very simple. In some way, your mission statement, purpose, many words, doesn't matter. Don't get lost in the jargon. This is a simple statement of what you're doing in life or want to do in life. Yes, critical minerals. Okay. Extract more. So I'm assuming. You figuring out a way to be more, uh, make the extraction more productive, efficient, all of that, cost effective maybe. Okay, Sugumar, uh, you're typing. If you have for that line to share with us, we'd love to hear. Developing intelligence surface for. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay. So uninterrupted Wi-Fi using intelligent surfaces. OK, kind of get it when you say surface. Give me an example. Intelligent surface as in, I mean, walls, partitions. What are you thinking of? Ah, OK, cool. So you're saying we all suffer from this, right? You have a router in one room, and the signal in the other room is just one third. So you're saying? Make sure the Wi-Fi signal is able to um, have that have that quality in spite of all the barriers. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you for sharing. And and uh, it's it's interesting to know the areas you're working on. And of course, we, there is some detail coming as well. But before we go forward into pitching, and you will, I guess, as somebody said, you, you most of you seem to be pre-seed seed anyway. We'll we'll get it, we'll help you make we'll help you prepare your presentations. Will also help you connect with the investors. That's by the way the charm of what we've been talking about: constant, continuous support from the Vadwani Foundation, uh, value add from the network, from the platform. This is the support. Help you refine your business first, and then help you refine your pitch, and then help you refine your search for the right investor. Okay, we'll get there. For now, I hear many pitches, many, many, many pitches. Some are brilliant. Most are OK to good, but some are, they go all over. Do you want to guess maybe one, one reason why people don't make great pitches? 
Try to guess. What do you think is missing in many presentations? So I would say great presentation that I hear, no more than 10 to 20 percent. 50, 60, 70 are in the middle. And to last 20, 30 is not good. Why do people struggle to make good presentations, good pitches? OK, good one. Good one. Talking too much about the solution and not about the value they're adding by solving problems. Great, Wilson. That's actually a good one. Anyone else? OK, let me show you the ones. Certainly not a comprehensive list. Huh, sorry, I'll wait. And while we wait, you know, the number one thing that I find missing in pitches is that they're very analytical. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, Surya, I think you're referring to that. They're very analytical, but it doesn't give me that sense that, you know, that person is so committed. That person is so emotionally invested. Of course, they are logistically invested, perhaps financially invested, but emotionally. What is your story? Why do you want to do this for the rest of your life? Is it because you personally suffered something you see around you? What's your personal story? Very strong and often the weakest link. And a whole host of things. People are not sure. They haven't done the homework. They, they actually don't know that many startups are out there. And people, you know, the one comment I don't like hearing, I'll be honest with you as an investor, when anybody pitches anything, and I say, who's your competition? And they say, no one. Not possible. There is, if not direct, there's indirect competition happening in India, in Indonesia, in Canada, in Japan. It has to be. I'll tell you, even if you can't find a company who's competing, the fact that consumer inertia, I don't have to buy, is your competition. Sometimes you have to work on beating their competition. So don't ever say, I don't have competition. You can say, to the extent I know, I have limited competition or indirect competition. Looks like these three people are. And we had a session on this, right? You have the templates with you. Uh, market opportunity, they don't know. It's too small, not very exciting for an investor. Um, you know, these financial projection guys, I have to tell you, I've seen people at the seed stage give me Excel files showing five-year projections. I'm telling you, it's like Harry Potter in Excel. It's too early. Your, your product is not even built. It's not validated. It's not seen the market. How do you know you can charge 100 rupees or 2,000 or 4,000? Uh, and people make these assumptions. Oh, in the first year, I'll sell, sell 1,000. The next year, just multiply by 10,000. 10, third year, 1 lakh. Hence, I will be a 100 crore company in three years. Sorry. Uh, that's just Excel magic. That's not real. Keep it real. And last point that you see in the slide, you know, people spend... People actually put Word files and Excel files in PPT and bring it to a presentation. No, a presentation is about exciting people. A presentation or a pitch is about creating that buzz and interest. Remember, as an investor, to say, ah, nice. I want to talk to these guys. Nobody cares too much. I mean, they care about numbers, but don't go, don't drown them. OK, I'm going to share with you five ways in which you can practice and make your pitches five times more impactful, 5x. Five things give you 5x impact. Things we've seen, learned, practiced, watched, advised many, many startups on. Number one, don't do spray and pray approach, which means it's OK. Every pitch competition, every investor, I'm Here I am. I'm going to present. Baba, be careful. Not everybody is the right investor for you. For not right, for every investor, you're not the right startup. So what do I mean? Do your homework. A, if you're doing pre-seed, seed, do they even make that kind of investment? Some investors will say our minimum check size one million dollars. They may not say, but essentially they're saying, listen, we we do not going to do early stage. We're not going to do idea stage. Some will say we do only idea stage. So if you're advanced, then you're Barking up the wrong tree. Some will say we do, we only focus on social ventures. And yours is a tech venture, commercial. They're not going to touch you. 
Some will focus on industries. We do only blockchains and NFTs. We do only EVs. So please, please, please do your homework. Figure out that the investor you're pitching to, what are the previous deals they've done? Do they even, are they interested in your space? Are they interested in the amount of money you're asking for? For, for some investors, see, 20 lakhs is a big amount. I get it. But for many investors, they say, yeah, I, I do two, three, five crore. For me, 20 lakhs is A, not exciting. B, I still have to do the same amount of paperwork for a 20 lakh deal. I much rather not. So they are small investors, big investors. Tech investors, non-tech investors. India investors, global investors. Please figure it out. Everybody is not the same. Second critical I mentioned earlier. Uh, what's your story? Make sure it comes out in the pitch. And I'll tell you how to do it. Make sure you convey very clearly who you are, why you're doing this, and what is the magic uh, that's with you and your team that nobody else has. Personal. What's your story? And Wilson, I'll wait for your question. The core of any presentation. Yeah, I'll come to that, Wilson. The core of any presentation, whether it's early stage or mid stage or growth stage, is your business model that's been validated. If you're early stage, obviously it is not being validated. So you have to show how you will validate it. If you're already out there, then just show that you know you figured things out. You made sales, you have a team, you have a product, you have customers, you're collecting monies. Maybe you collecting 100 rupees and spending 200. That's one story. You're collecting 100 and spending 20. What is your business health looking like? And folks, I won't get into these, but you can Google your way out, chat GPT your way out of this. Anytime you go to raise, again, depending on where you are on the X axis, you will be asked certain metrics. And, and spend some time getting to know some of these. What is CAC, customer acquisition cost slash lifetime value? uh monthly run rate annual run rate customer satisfaction score net promoter score churn rate conversion rate referral rate again not everything is applicable to everybody also depends on the industry but please familiarize yourself with some of these key metrics that you will be asked on often people think pitching equals powerpoint in fact the people who are offered this as a service you can actually go to a company and say this is my idea hai, da, 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 da. Give me a PPT and they'll do it. They'll charge you money for it. I don't recommend it. PowerPoint skills are not being tested. It is how you convey your story is being tested. And until you own it, it won't come through very strongly. So PowerPoint is not always enough. Take your product, give demos if, if you can. If you don't have a real product, maybe a uh, demo video or, or, or uh, reels that, that convey what you're trying to do. Make it visual, make it engaging. If you are making a PowerPoint presentation, have you heard of the 10, 20, 30 rule, anyone? Guy Kawasaki's. Yes, no? 10, 20, 30 rule for making great presentations. No, okay. No, okay, broad guideline. He says, no more than 10 slides should not take you greater than 20 minutes to make that presentation. And no font should be less than 30. The point is, use visual, convey big picture. Don't drown your audience in text and details. So folks, if you notice, pitch deck is four out of five elements. By design, I have presented it in, towards the end. Most people start by saying, okay, pitching, PowerPoint. No. Pitching is your story. Who are you going to present to and why? And what is the core business? What are your core business fundamentals? Your idea, competition, customer, problem, metrics. And then how do you put it together in a PPT? And then how do you deliver it? And folks, I keep saying, I'll repeat, you can practice this. People actually do... People record their pitching sessions and use that to feedback. They pitch to their friends, pitch to their family members. Please remember, your confidence as a founder has to come through. Because especially at the early stage, the investor is betting on you the most. Maybe 60, 70, 80% of the bet is on you. And the remaining on your idea and your ability to pull it off and execute it. 
so please 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 practice uh, be confident go slow listen to the questions carefully give answers honestly if you don't have an answer don't fib don't sit there and write fictional stories that they will come back later and found that find that you were you had there was no foundation for those so if you don't have an answer just say no or can i get back to you be super honest remember what i said the way you present also conveys who you are as a person the investor has to resonate with you as a human being if they don't trust you they say i don't know the guy's a little wishy washy he didn't give me straight answers he didn't even listen to me i'm not that's probably not happening as a relationship okay i'll pause wilson in the meantime i'll get to your question so again before you say how do we get a list of investors the question to ask ourselves is what stage am i at am i looking for early stage investors am i looking for seed am i looking for angels am i looking for h and i am i looking for friends and family so get that clarity first if you are at an early stage which i suspect you are uh, best investors are angel networks and there are micro angels as well uh, again you can google but you know venture catalyst uh, mumbai angels uh, there are many others out there uh, super angels angel list there are many of them out there uh, you can do that but i find the most helpful a uh, path for early stage startups to get funding is to work through an incubator because the incubator already has a pool of investors and by definition they work with early stage startups so you don't have to do the homework they can you can go to them and say okay this is my startup i'm working in the accessibility zone they say okay we have 20 investors but these five work in this space that connection and introduction is faster filtering is faster selection is faster uh a and b incubators also have access to other funds i mentioned earlier startup india seed fund so if not an investor investor they can help you with grants or loans as well uh so again the list is huge uh start thinking about what you want and who you want it from the answers are most answers are out there and most good investors have pretty decent sites so they will tell you ye karte hain ye nahi karte is tarah ka investor hai is tarah ka startup chahiye is technology ka chahiye uh but please google incubators uh so niti ayog has atil incubation centers around the country 70 80 odd at least the last time i checked uh the list is available on their website go to the atil innovation mission slash niti ayog site all 70 are listed by state by region by domain tara tara you can sort it and and see if some conversation there are helpful your own institutes may have incubators by the way uh, so you should that should be your first point of check third of course um, you know at vadhwani foundation we have programs that run so if you qualify and arti will tell you how you qualify for those if you qualify and and uh, out of this program if you make some submissions then some more options become open uh, open up for you including more structured support around funders of course nobody can promise funders but certainly we can offer a lot of hand holding hope that helps wilson remember we said many many types of pitches we did the one chota tag line 5 second uh here is a 60 second wala idea which means it's only an idea at this stage you don't have a product you haven't even gone developed any prototypes yet you may have just validated the problem a little bit very very early stage but can you convey it in 60 seconds you bet you can so here's a simple template for whom are you developing for students da 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 in grades so and so who want to achieve this who want to do well in school and learn etc etc but are bored with bad classes and bad curriculum we want to do ar vr based learning which will enable them to immerse and engage with topics making them feel excited confident uh, and positive uh, the reason i'm doing it because i'm just a believer in the power of education i don't know probably took 30 40 seconds folks this is a template i'm going to go back here's the template and these templates are on the platform we have one two three examples i think per template out there
Okay. Does anyone want to try this? For your idea. This is an idea pitch, which means we know you don't have a product, but you have some thought clarity out there. Does anyone want to try? Okay. So this, you can take a screenshot now, but the template is available on the platform. So we did the five second, we did the 50, 60 second, which is this. And that's the example right there. And now this is the five to 10 minute, which really gets into a lot more detail. If you look at the template here, it still talks about problem and solution and target customers and et cetera. But you can look at some of the other elements. We talk about market size. We've done this time, Sam, et cetera. Who's the competition? What is the team? How will you sell it? How will you make money, et cetera, et cetera. Again, we have a template or, and, and a couple of examples on the platform. Five second, 50 second, five minute. And don't worry, this is a startup pitch, which means you may have done some bit of validation, but you're not quite out there yet, which is why we also want you to tell us what will you do next. If you notice, they're saying this is what we'll do. We'll develop it. We'll test it. We'll hire people. We'll raise funds. Where are there? Again, the template sits with you. And the last, if you remember, was a formal presentation you will make. Usually, uh, if you had some MVP, post MVP, early traction, some contact with the market, real contact. Every pitch deck. Okay, now here's, here's our tip to you. You can Google tons of examples, but I'm telling you, every pitch deck will look for these 12 components. It does not mean you have to have 12 slides. You may have 15, you may have eight. But these messages, stories, narratives have to come across super clearly in your presentation, usually at a later stage in the venture. This is the 10 minute voila, 15 minute voila presentation. And you'll notice some usual suspects story problem who the customer what is the solution and why is so great a little bit around timing team bhi gaya hai. competition there hai. a little bit around financials and marketing and what is the funding and what are you going to do with this money so it kind of brings everything together and once again here's the beauty of it these 12 things have all been covered in these nine sessions. If you recall, we did a session on timing, session on competition, size as well, of course, solution and problem. If you miss sessions, A, see the videos. B, for every session in the resources section, there are templates. So each of these is templatized. So if you do the templates, guess what? Your pitch deck is ready, at least 80, 90% ready. So that's the beauty. If you once you start building your venture, I understand your early stage. If you just keep tracking to those templates, not only will you get business clarity because that's number one, right? You're not building a business for the investor. The purpose of a business is not to make a good pitch deck. The purpose of a business is to make a good business, fundamentally sound and all of that. But if you do that, if you work on those fundamentals, pitching should be a natural byproduct. I'm going to share with you something I mentioned, I think, two sessions back. Uh, it's a free site that's available, which gives you a report on, you notice this? How ready are you to raise funds? How ready are you to launch? And if you get low scores, you will also get recommendations on what you need to go. If you get high scores, you get a lot of strengths. Uh, so again, soarhigh.in, free online assessment. You get a report in five minutes or less. Okay, so let me quickly wrap it up, at least this session, and we'll open it up for all Q&A. Uh, there are tons of funding options, both in quantum and stage, and who you raise from, and type of instrument uh, out there. Uh, good to work with a mentor or an incubator who can guide you through this, but there's no dearth. There is little squeeze, but funding is still happening. But nevertheless, whenever you start raising funds, whether it's 20 lakhs or 20 crores, it will take time. It's take, it takes time. People tell these horror stories, right? That we've had to uh, make 50 presentations or 60 presentations before we got the first check. It's real, by the way. Sometimes it's 10, 20. 10, 20 is fairly normal. 
10, 20 presentations before they get somebody to say, yeah, yeah, this looks interesting, take a money. Uh, so be prepared. But also, 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 please remember, funding is just one milestone in this long journey you're in. No, you're building a great venture that will last 10, 20, 30 years, 50 years, beyond our lifetimes. So it is validation, but it's not the ultimate validation. Ultimate validation is what you do for your customers. And as far as pitching is concerned, both in terms of making the pitch, PPT, or presenting it, very practicable, learnable skills. OK, happy to take questions for this session and series at large. Any questions? on what we covered today, or something we covered in the past, or what's going to happen in the future. Actually, what's going to happen in the future, Aarti is going to, my colleague Aarti is going to talk to you uh, in just a minute. Let's take some questions, and we'll get Aarti on. Because we, we really want to make sure all that you've taken, I know we've thrown a lot at you in nine weeks. Some you may have digested. Others, you may need more time. We get it. Uh, but we want to make sure we are there for you as you imbibe, learn, apply this to your respective ideas and ideas of others, we want to make sure the support continues. OK. Um, yes, yes. Wilson, yes, yes, yes. Go to the platform. There are templates and samples. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, great. Surya wants to speak. Sudanju. Sudanju. Surya, as soon as we get yes, to the... ah, yes, yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you, Sudanshu and Surya. You should be on now. I saw Sukumar also typing. If you want, Sukumar, you can also ask your question. We can hand over the mic to you as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Hi, so... Surya. Yeah. So uh, regarding this uh, funding option, um, I, I was thinking of uh, like instead of uh, pitching to an investor and asking money, uh, money will be kind of a tangible form. But can I also ask uh, uh, like uh, somebody who has certain assets and I want to use that asset because ultimately what I will do with the money is I, I want to raise some asset because I have to do some testing and all those things. So instead of raising money and, you know, renting or buying myself those assets, uh, there is some asset available and that is not 100% utilized. So I can, you know, uh, uh, use uh, those assets. So, uh, so this is kind of a intangible way of making a, you know, uh, asking for funds. So what kind of agreements, you know, suppose if they agree to allow me to use their facility, so what kind of uh, agreements I should be signing or, you know, uh, so that there is no dispute in the future or uh, those things. Okay, good question, Surya. So uh, uh, let me elaborate on the first point you raised, which is a good point, that we, we've talked almost exclusively on funding as, coming from the investor. But good investor startup relationships are those in which the value goes beyond the money, in which the, the investor brings domain knowledge, connections, ability to help you get into operation and plan strategies and do global. There's a whole host of services that uh, you should look at when you sign up with an investor. If you remember two, three weeks ago, we talked about you know alignment with your mission, value add, those, those are. Musts 
of course, funding will be number one because if somebody can't give you money but gives everything else, then they're more like a mentor, which is okay. But money plus X, what is that X? Uh, has to be looked at. In your specific example, if they have facilities or labs or in, right, that's what you're referring to, they can use. Now, if they, I've seen many such relationships where they use labs. Uh, in fact, one founder didn't, didn't have a technical uh, te tech knowledge. So they went to an IT company that does software development and said, I will outsource it to you, but I will not pay you. Instead, I will give you four, five, ten percent equity. So they became an investor who didn't bring any money, but money brought resources price. and their uh, development team to the table. So it depends on how you define investor. And depending on that nature, there's usually a service contract that's done. So there's two kinds of contract. One is if I'm giving you money and expecting a return or giving a loan and with interest, it's different terms. Hoti hai. And, and CA, uh, most CA lawyers can handle that. The other is a service contract where you're saying I, you will use my lab for 10 hours a week uh, for which you will not pay me, but in return, I will get X percent equity or you will get equity that vested over a period of time for the first 12 months. Kuch nahi milega. Uske 0 0.5. Next is another 0.5. So stagger karna hai, uski deal bana ja sakti hai. A lot of lawyers will help you with this. Okay. So and there is also the, IP issue is also there. IP issues also, of course, there. in any service contract, including investor contract, IPR is, is discussed. So especially if you want to see with investors, it's very clear. They want you to own your IPR, but it's one of the one of the clauses in the contract. But with service contracts where you're using uh, the, either their time or resources or, or facilities, be super critical about this. Just because somebody else is doing your software development or your, or your software is getting tested on somebody or your robot is getting, or your rocket is getting tested, whatever, for lab, biotech lab, the IPR should stay with you. Make sure that's super clear. Now, usually, but somebody might make an offer. Let's say you, I have a lab and you come to me and I say, okay, uh, use my lab. I don't want, I don't want equity. Give me 10% share in your IPR. So tomorrow, if you sell the license, tomorrow, if you get revenues, I get 10%. It's a matter of negotiation. So there's no standard answer, Surya. Uh, be careful who you talk to, what are you selling? And question I always encourage founders to say, can I build this skill in house? Maybe you can't, but ask yourself that question. Yeah, bus. Capability, hai, knowledge, hai, experience, hai, paisa hai, facility, hai, then maybe. Because the moment you bring such kind of uh, relationships, no, there's contracting, there's legal, there's that room for friction. Hamisha hota hai. Are co founders mein friction ho jati hai. Partners with that difficulty. Hai. It's not impossible. Be super clear. Do hire a lawyer to do this for you. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, so just, just to take this forward, because uh, uh, I, I was thinking of, you know, either raising a money or, you know, uh, asking somebody to rent, uh, like, uh, allow me to work in their uh, facility and asset. So, uh, uh, like, I'm into a pre-seed or, you know, at a very initial stage. So, uh, uh, so the second option, I, I thought that it will be better because I want to see for next two years, three years, how, you know, I have this idea and I have to make it work, generate some revenue. So I'm, I'm still not, uh, you know, very clear that how it will pan out. So uh, raising a lot of money and then uh, raising an asset from it. And suppose if it does not work out, then everything will go waste. So that is why uh, the second option I, I thought can be a better option and then uh, in in the long term if 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 i generate a good business then i can uh, generate my own uh, you know i can raise more money and establish my own facility and things like that Correct. so do Correct. you think this is a, this is a good approach again see it depends on where you are in the other the question i said you have to ask yourself how easy is for me is for me to acquire the capability skills and resources agar hard hai time wise hard hai money wise hard hai then you have to go into second direction. I'm seeing people go in the second direction, usually two industries these days, heavy engineering, which I think is your industry and space tech, because imagine space tech module, module banane ko test karne mein 50, 60 crore lag jate. Nobody has that kind of money. So they go either they pay fee. So they, you can raise money to pay the fee. 
or you can tie up with them if they're okay and say, I will not pay you, but I'll give you equity. Or third, you do it on your own. Three options. Yeah, a, a simple analogy I can, if I can give is like, suppose I, if I want to make some uh, rocket or satellite, so sh instead of establishing my own lab and raising money and doing all the investment, can I go to some college, you know, some IIT Madras or ISC Bangalore and ask them to use their facility? So oh, dude, is it fact, a good, good fact, approach? No, no, Surya, bahut badi hai. in fact, incubators ke saath deal yehi hoti hai. for high tech incubators or ISROs of the world, for example, space wale example mein, or yes. IIT Chennai. They will say, come, we have all the equipment and the lab. We will give you mentoring, technical support, business support, but we'll take 3%. Yes, standard model incubators. So, so what you're thinking about is not that uh, offbeat. Yes. Very, very possible. Happens all the time. Okay. Thank you. So again, but what, what you need to do is do some homework on which incubators are working and have the capability and assets in your domain. Okay. And do they have it or not? Are they already supporting startups? Because the ecosystem is the end of the day, you're not just renting out a lab. You are also taking their help to take your startup to the market. So the network will be there. Technical mentors, marketing agencies, potentially buyers, corporates, government contacts. Right, you know, because this is largely government controlled industry around the world. So all that value you might get in that relationship. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, you're welcome. Good luck. Okay, any more questions or comments? Or yes, while he was we was typing something when Surya was speaking. Ah. Okay, great question. Like I said, first port of call for everybody should be to go to your own incubator. Now, I understand there are two challenges that many incubators have, and I'm being honest. Okay, I don't know how whether you have these challenges or not, but majority of the incubators are not very well equipped. And equipped doesn't mean like Surya saying machinery. Kaiba machinery, but they don't have the right people to guide you. Both. They may, may not have the technical know-how. And they may not have the facilities. Make sure the incubator is is mature. Many incubators are new. They're trying hard, but many are still struggling to offer good value. A and B. Does that incubator, your own incubator, does it have experience in your domain? Can it open up new networks and channels for you? If the answer is yes, then best thing is to use your own incubator, of course. But you have to make a decision in terms of what is, what will give your startup the best amount of push. Just because it is nearby doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for you. You have to evaluate. Which only, uh, yes, yes, Sugumar, great question. Uh, Okay, so remember I said pitching can happen to a lot of many kinds of people. If you have multiple ideas in your head and you're just bouncing them off using the you know one of the templates that we showed, and you're showing it to a friend, a family member, mentor, koi problem nahi hai. Bolo, I'm going to pitch idea one. I'm going to pitch idea two. I'm going to pitch idea three. Mera tino ki feedback, not a problem. But at, once you start going to grant making agencies or, or investors, please take only one idea. Show your focus and dedication and commitment to that idea. As far as internally, you can do any number of ideas. I, I don't know if I told this story. Uh, when I was running the Time of the Media Incubator one summer, uh, we spent the entire summer with a student who had 42 ideas. And he had 42 pitches to make to us. And that's what he did. Entire summer break, he stayed on campus every day, every two, three days, he would come make a pitch, make a pitch, make a pitch. And we helped him sort through that list. Of course, the final call is yours, but we gave feedback. OK, while you can absolutely punch in more questions, may I invite my colleague, Aarti, for a quick walkthrough. Thanks, Ajay, just sharing mm -hmm. my uh 
screen while we wait for the questions to come. Just give me a minute. Let me know when my screen is visible, please. Okay, not yet. Yeah. And now it is. And there it is. All right. So this is the Think Startup cohort one. That's your cohort. Uh, you'll have all the material available here. Now, I think what is of prime importance right now, considering the fact that we are in the ninth session, that's the last session for this particular cohort, is the submissions. So in your resource pages, you will have something called the submissions to unlock the benefits. I really would request each of you to go there and take a look at this. Now, what does this actually have? This gives you details of how you can get, number one, a completion certificate from Badwani. So the completion certificate is very simple. All you need to do to get this completion certificate is to ensure that you have actually attended all the, uh, you know, all, this, all the sessions that we've had. If you've attended it online, great. If not, you can go ahead and look at the recordings, etc. So it will give you the details here, right? The next thing that we have in store for you is uh, is really how you are going to get your uh, unlocking the other benefits that we've spoken about. Now, what are these other benefits? These are the one-on-one -on -one coachings. These are, uh, you know, doing your pitch and getting feedback on that. And also some specialized sessions that we would like to offer you. Now, these sessions could be a deeper dive into the other aspects of uh, startups, which we've not been able to cover in these nine sessions. So how do you unlock those benefits? Let me just show you that. Hold on. OK, so this is what we are calling our higher order benefits. Yeah, and what are the benefits that are available for you? Number one, feedback on your pitch, invitation to master classes. That's the specialized sessions that I was talking to you about. Two coaching sessions, which will be one on one. And you could also decide to move into our next program, which is a lift off program. And I'll give you more details over, on that over a mail. Now, how do you unlock those benefits? Number one, you need to have completed the completion criteria. That's the fact that you needed to have completed the nine sessions, either offline or online, and you should have finished all the journal entries. There is an extra journal entry that we would like you to do if you want to open up this, and that's on the venture roadmap. Now, we understand that right now you may not have a complete venture roadmap available. That's fine. Even if it's just bullet points and what you think will happen in the next you know, few months, that's good enough. We would also like you to submit the problem canvas, the elevator pitch. Now, these are the pitches which uh, which Ajay did share with you here. And just to ensure that it's easy for you, we've also included the templates in this particular completion details, details itself. So here you'll have to actually fill up three uh, templates, the problem canvas, the idea elevator pitch. What's missing over here, which is a miss from us, is the startup idea pitch, which is nothing but that single pager. Now, what these are, you have all the examples here. So these examples that you see, these are filled in examples. It will give you an idea of how you can fill this out for yourself. And this is the submission template that you can use. All you need to do is download this. It will give you all those pitches that we spoke about. And you can go ahead, put your name here, attach the file and it gets submitted. Now, how long do you have to get this done? From the time that your course finishes, that is today, you have another two weeks. So within two weeks, if you're able to submit these three pitches, then we open up the higher order benefits for you. Yeah, you have filled in some of these earlier. The only reason that we are putting all this at one shot over here is that we don't want you to go through various sessions, try and look for it and all of that, which is why we made it simpler by adding all the templates here. If there are any questions on submissions, I'd love to take them. OK, and if I can just reiterate what Aarti said, 
over the next two weeks, we don't expect you to have really surged ahead with as far as launching your startup is concerned. But your thought process and some bit of research, primary, secondary, hopefully you can do. And these templates are uh, will help you take that, that thinking forward. I'm reiterating in two weeks, wherever you are, as far as basic homework is concerned, if you will, idea, problem, no canvas, whatever, whatever, these templates will only take those inputs and essentially ask you, what do you want to do next? Absolutely. And just to add a little bit more, once you've given us an idea of what is it that you would want to more do, if you want to sharpen it, that's where your other specialized sessions come in. So we will have sessions on pitching. We will have sessions on, you know, getting not only your idea, your elevator pitch, but also your startup pitch in place. So all of these open up only depending upon the interest that we see from you. Okay, thank you, Aarti. Okay, so Kumar, how much time do you have to unlock this? You have two weeks starting two weeks. tomorrow. And if there's any questions, uh, oh, good one. So Wilson, the whole team, uh, we have a team here that does this, who monitors and looks at the quality of submissions. And as, as long as you put it on the platform, we'll get a notification and one of us will review and, and give you feedback. Absolutely. Okay, so Arti, if you don't mind, I'm going to have maybe one or two slides quickly to wrap up. Sure, sure. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Same, Wilson. Uh, on the platform, there is a contact us uh, section. Any troubleshooting, any support, uh, you can post there. You can put it in the community chat and say, I'm struggling with this pitch deck. I don't know what to do, etc., etc. And we will, we will support you. If you don't understand a template or the example is confusing, either directly as a Q&A over in the community, you can put it. So you will find all of us there. So you can just you know message any of us, and we'll be happy to respond. OK, Surya is typing. Happy to continue taking questions. But I do want to end on this these lines from Robert Frost. Uh, which is essentially about the startup journey being extremely enticing, very exciting, but it has its share of challenges. But the way forward is to be at it, no matter what happens. Going forward, figuring it out. And what we want to assure you one more time is that we are with you in this journey. The roads may be winding up and down, going wherever, but uh, in person and through the platform, of course our support stays with you. And I do want to, as you bring the series to an end, I want to thank you, uh, the folks on the call. You've been super committed. You've been there participating, asking questions, responding. Uh, thank you. Heartfelt thank you from my side uh, for being on the program. Others who have perhaps uh, been with us early but not there, if you're watching the video, thank you uh, for, for coming on to the series. And uh, the series ends, but our conversation connections don't. And uh, thank you. And I want to take a moment to also thank Sudhanshu, who's been supremely helpful in making sure all the se sessions and all the entire setup on the platform happens seamlessly. Uh, while you may see him only for a few minutes on the session, he does. He spends 20 times that amount of time uh, before the session starts. So, Sudhanshu, thank you, Arti. Uh, my partner in crime, smiling, supportive, always there for everybody and always the cheerleader um, for all of us. So thank you. Hope to stay connected. Hope to hear from you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ajay. And I think on behalf of all of us, including the participants, we would like to thank you for being such an amazing facilitator. It's been great. These nine weeks have just gone by. These nine sessions have just gone by. And it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hannah has a question that I think either you or Sandhanshu can answer. Yeah, Hannah, I'll take you to there. So I'm gonna going to share my screen. And we'll show you how to finish the...
previous general questions. Let me share my screen. Um, yeah. So, Dancho, I think her question is that she has filled them, but they yet seem to be empty. Okay. So, so we'll maybe share. some sort of a problem with submission. Okay, we'll look into it. So, guys, I have already shared a, a link with you over the chat window. I would request uh, you all to click on that link. It will take you to this page. Expanding the screen. Sorry, I opened the wrong page. So the link will take you to this page. Do you, do you also want to put the link to the uh, feedback poll as well, so they can do it quickly? Yeah, so the, uh, we have uh, uh, collated all of the, the uh, feedback poll and the general question in the same link. Gotcha. So usually, participants get confused with, between mm. multiple links. So we have, uh, in, I mean, collated all of that. So first of all, you have to mention, enter your name. Then the second uh, thing is entrepreneurship is important to me because take a cue from Mentimeter activity I just concluded. So we haven't done the Mentimeter activity, but we have already discussed this part uh, during the session. So you can, uh, based on your understanding, you can fill it. So you're expecting them to do it now, right? With you, right? Yes. Yes, Ajay. Okay. okay. Thank you, Wilson. You can also go and revise a few of your answers in case you need to. So just pen in some thoughts right now, and later if you want to, you know, refine it, that's a possibility which is always open to you. Okay, do give us when you're done with the question number one i'll move to the other question then go ahead Sudanshu. i think just keep scrolling down sure the second one is what stage of your startup journey are you today so this is our i mean options are not started yet early stage growth stage late stage so you have to simply click your option Okay, and the next is your level next of interest. Is, what level is my interest in entrepreneurship from the time I started WN Think Startup Series? Very interested, somewhat interested, not interested. You have to select select your option. The next question is: What could be your next steps to use the learnings from the WN Think Startup Series? So you have to submit your answer inside this box. The next is how would you read the usefulness of information provided on securing funding of, for your startup? This is basically feedback pool. So you have to select uh, the relevant option. Guys, do give a thumbs up on the chat window. I can't see. Uh, so Wilson is saying that he has submitted. Surya, are you still there? Surya, Tina, Hannah, I'm waiting an update from you guys. Do give a thumbs up when, when it's done so that I'll take you to the session material section. I'll show you what all uh, additional session material is there. We have already saw, uploaded all the previous sessions recordings. So I request you guys, whosoever has missed uh, any of these sessions, you go through it, those videos and unlock all your permissions. OK, Surya is done. Tina, Hannah, waiting for you guys to finish your uh, uh, general question and feedback. So guys, uh, when you go to the take action session nine, you will find the idea pitch template with examples. So if this is the editable PPT. You simply have to download and you can uh, do your exercise. 
There are two templates actually. So go through both these templates. Then apart from this, we have uh, additional references for you guys in the session material. When you go to the session nine, securing funding for your startup, which is under session material. You'll be able to see this agenda. Recording will be uploading it here in next 24, within 24 hours. So if you have joined this session a bit late, so you can uh, watch this video. Then there is a quick, quick recap and then a small. So uh, we will be doing a special session and which will be updating you through the email. This is a, going to be an invite only session. And uh, in order to get these invites, we request you guys to complete all your submissions, watch all those previous videos. If you haven't finished your assignments, do all of that. So fourth is additional references. Here you will find multiple short videos, which will be very useful for you. So these are all short two, three, four minute videos. So that will hardly take 10, 15 minutes of yours. First is funding option for an entrepreneur. Then second is pitch perfect, the key element in a pitch deck. So whatever we have discussed, you'll uh, be, uh, I mean, you'll be able to learn more from all these videos. So these are the videos. Then we have a case slide here as well. You'll see a short video of uh, Varun Kona, who is the co-founder and CEO of Head Out, how he uh, used his bootstrapping strategy to initially fund his own uh, startup. So that will also help you in understanding a lot. I think Surya, you also had a couple of Wilson, uh, you guys have some questions related to bootstrapping funding and all. So that will also help you in understanding where to access these. Okay. Let me show you then I'm closing this window. So when you uh, open your cohort, you will, when you go to your cohort 001, you will find uh, a window like this community seminar session, my resources. So you have to go to my resources tab, a page like this will appear series overview submission to unlock benefits. You have to scroll it down my journal. So my, through my journal, you have to fill all these general question and feedback poll. You have to scroll down a little more. You'll find all these session materials here. So for today's session, you have to click on securing funding for your startup. A page like this will appear. Click on the expand button. You see it in a full screen. You'll see all these things here. Agenda, in session resource, upcoming session, funding option for additional references. All of this is here. And after these reference videos, you can go to take action section where you'll find the editable pitch templates. Tina, we are still waiting for an update from you or the rest of the people have already filled their general question and feedback poll. If you can also give us a thumbs up if it's done. So similarly, all these previous sessions, session material is already there. I just gave you an example, I showed you an example of session nine, but uh, similarly, we have all these uh, session recording as well as session material, additional references, everything is there in all these sessions. You will see the list of all these sessions here along with their names and you simply have to um, go through the content.